All right, guys, let's get out our Regents Review Packet. And we are going to turn to the page that says Human Impact. Human impact was the last topic that we did. Um, the most important thing really to know about human impact is that the human population is increasing very, very rapidly. And this is a problem. The reason why this is a problem is because the number of resources that we have available is going to be finite or limited. Finite means that we don't have unlimited resources. So there's a certain amount of water, there's going to be a certain amount of food, and there's going to be a certain amount of natural resources like coal, water, wind, biomass. Why is the human population increasing so much? Well, that really has to do with industrialization. Remember the industri industrial revolution that happened in the 1800s? That allowed to the mass production of food and the mass production of goods. Additionally, we've also had a lot of medical advances in recent years such as antibiotics and also vaccines. Those are le leading more people to live a longer life. Also, it has decreased infant mortality. Why is human population such a big deal? Well, first off, human population is leading to global warming. Global warming is directly caused by the burning of fossil fuels. Burning of fossil fuels can include things like driving cars, can include things like heating your house. And what happens is that when you do those things, you release a lot of carbon dioxide into the air. As you release more and more carbon dioxide into the air, the temperature of the earth starts to increase. Now remember, we're not talking about daily increases. Instead, what we're talking about is the global temperature for the entire year for everywhere on the planet. When the temperature starts to increase, what can happen is that there can be more flooding and more droughts, more extreme weather. All of these type of environmental problems then is going to lead to a decrease in biodiversity because not all organisms are going to be able to survive temperature changes and climate changes that occur like that. The next thing that we're going to talk about is the invasive species. Now sometimes instead of invasive species, they might either call it an imported species or a non-native species. What that means is that these organisms do not typically live in this environment. So they occur when a foreign organism is introduced into a new ecosystem. These organisms usually do not have any predators. That is a big problem. If you don't have a predator, that means nothing's eating you. So you actually have no natural checks and balances. Remember that carrying capacity idea? This one's able to kind of get around that because they don't have any predators. And usually they can outcompete the ones that are native to that environment since they don't have any predators. So they compete with native species. Typically they win. And since they win, they are going to be more successful. This disrupts the entire ecosystem because now all those food chains and those food webs that we talked about when we did ecology, they're not going to be sustainable. The example we talked about was the zebra mussel. Remember the zebra mussels, they went into the Hudson River. Now that they're in the Hudson River, they're causing a lot of problems in terms of the food webs and the food chains there. Next up, ozone layer depletion. We did not talk a lot about this. The ozone layer is a thin layer that acts like sunscreen for the earth. It's caused by CFCs. What are CFCs? CFCs are found in refrigerants, like um, air conditionings and refrigerators. It's also found in old aerosol cans. So, you know, like um, spray paint. For the most part, they're not used anymore. But the damage that we've done takes a while to go and fix itself. Why is the hole in the ozone layer such a problem? The hole in the ozone layer is a problem because it leads to skin cancer. The ozone layer is like a natural SPF, a natural sunscreen. And when it starts to thin, or when you start to deplete it, use it up, that means that that natural sunscreen that's in our atmosphere is no longer there, which increases our risk of getting skin cancer. Next up, we have nuclear power. Nuclear power 
is good because it produces no air pollution. Remember that fossil fuels that we were talking about? Fossil fuels is going to lead to global warming. Nuclear power, there's no air pollution. So that's a big positive. There is, however, a negative. The negative is that this waste is going to be radioactive. Anything that's radioactive can potentially cause cancer. So the waste products of a nuclear power plant could cause cancer in humans and other organisms. Additionally, we have something called thermal pollution. Thermal pollution, think thermal, means heat. Thermal pollution is talking about when the temperature of the water increases. If the temperature of the water increases, that's going to mean that there's less oxygen inside of the water. Less oxygen means that things like fish are going to die. Because remember, even though uh, fish are, don't breathe how we breathe using lungs, they have their gills. And the gills allow them to go and take in oxygen. If there's not enough oxygen inside of the water, that's going to be when those organisms are going to die off. Some other ideas that we need to know about are going to be farming. So let's flip our paper over like this. Farming is a problem, and the reason why is because it reduces the native species. And what we mean by that is certain organisms would be living in that environment, but instead what we did is we got rid of them. And now we're like, hey, we're going to plant corn there. Or, hey, we're going to plant strawberries there. Those might not be the species that would typically live there, but we've planted them so that they do grow. Another problem with farming is that we have something called fertilizers. In fertilizers, there's a lot of runoff of fertilizers. Remember, that means when it rains, now that fertilizer is going to go and run off into rivers, lakes, and streams. This is a problem because this actually increases algae growth. And if you get too much algae growing in an area, it actually makes it so that other organisms can't live there successfully. That's because the algae more or less choke out the other organisms. They can't get the resources that they need any longer. Another word that you might hear is direct harvesting. And when we think about direct harvesting, we can actually think of the term poaching. Poaching means going and getting organisms from environment when it is illegal. Think about the elephant tusks that we looked at. Our next part is going to be, what can we do to help the environment? Big ones, reduce, reuse, recycle. Those three R's. And probably we're doing some of those in our house right now. Reduce, don't use up a resource anymore. Reuse, you can bring those reusable bags to the grocery store. Recycle, you put things into the big recycling bin so that they can be used again. <clears throat> Another big thing is alternative energy sources. Alternative energy sources include wind, water, solar, and nuclear power. These are really important, especially the wind, the water, and the solar. Those are kind of like green energies. Remember, those are going to be renewable resources, meaning once they're used up, they can actually regenerate themselves. Another thing we can do is pass laws to increase conservation and preservation. When we're talking about preservation, we're talking about protecting different types of organisms, especially endangered organisms. Also, whenever we do anything, we should really be considering what the trade-offs are. The trade-offs are looking at the pros and cons. So you want to put in a new development. What are the pros and cons to that? The con is obviously going to be that you're going to cut down trees, and then that's going to displace animals. The pro would be that you have new buildings in order to house more people or house more businesses. One other concept that we want to add to this, I'm just going to stick it right here, is going to be biomagnification. Biomagnification is the idea that we talked about when we discussed the bald eagle. Remember, the bald eagle wound up getting toxins inside of it because the fish that it ate had toxins, and then the fish ate plants that had the toxin. And what winds up happening with biomagnification is going to be there's going to be an increase in the chemical the higher up you get in the food chain.
This is bad because the concentration just keeps increasing as you move up. So the plants might not have a lot of the toxin inside of it, but then as you move up to the next level, the herbivores, there's more toxin. And as you move up to the carnivores, there's even more toxins. And that has to do with that biomass pyramid that we talked about. In order to keep a bald eagle alive, you might need a thousand plants, which means you need a hundred of the herbivores. And then you need 10 of the primary carnivores. And then for that top level carnivore, that just keeps one of them alive, meaning that they have a very, very high concentration of toxins inside of them. And again, this is the example that we talked about here was the bald eagle. All right, remember if you have any questions, you can always rewatch this video. We're also gonna do a couple of review questions.